So hello and welcome back to another video and today we're talking about the geological features of Australia's earthquakes. So most of Australia's earthquakes are shallow centered and here which I like to do a recording of this I don't like to do screenshots because uh, it's a lot easier to use a pointer and also to change. So the earliest uh, evidence of a volcano we have is a Cadell fault scarp. Actually there's probably a lot of evidence but on this historical earthquakes of Australia this is the earliest and this is a between 20 and 70 thousand year old uplift. So we have an image down here and it looks like a hill. Uh, if they probably done core samples and realized it was uplifted and this was, so this side's been uplifted, this side has not, and it's just been eroded. Uh, when it would have been uplifted, it would have been a quite clear distinction that you could have seen the uh, actual sedimentation. In it. And it had a magnitude of 7.3. So that's the earliest set we got, and then we've got some other ones. So here we have uh, Gunnings. So... Doesn't look like there's any information for that. Uh, oh, 1934 time. So they actually know. And you can see they're all shallow because this one is 10 kilometers. The quadro, we don't have any information on depth because we didn't have any seismic readings. Then down below, we have some 2000. So this is a depth of 18 kilometers. So this shallow depth means that uh, th there is no fault boundaries or tectonic boundaries in Australia. Australia is in the middle of a plate. So all these volcan uh, all these earthquakes are related to fault lines. And what's the other one? The other one is 2012, Maui. This had a Depth of 10 kilometers, magnitude 5.4, so similar to the one that happened yesterday. And it happened at 8 53. So, this is a good map. It's on Geoscience, just look like Historical Earthquakes of Australia. And the website should be Geoscience. And if we pick another date, so I don't know, we pick. There's some more dates, so 1934, you got that one, 1918, you got one that is off the coast of rock between Rockland and Bundaberg, depth of 15 kilometers, magnitude of 6, so these are all pretty current. How about 20,000 years ago, oh, we have one in Tasmania, magnitude 7, and... Large Edgar Fault is one of the most prominent fault scarps that has been found in southwest Tasmania. The 30 kilometer long north south trending scarp. So the, the fault line was 30 kilometers, and that's the length of movement. Occurred within the boundary of Southwest National Park. The scarp traversed the Huon Plains and is notable because resulting in defeat of westerly flowing streams and the consequent formation of Lake Iga so it's the actual river has been dammed. Recent research indicate this fault scarp formed as a result of a three uh, of three fault earthquakes of magnitude 6.8 to 7 between 18,000 and 61,000 years ago. So it's actually quite nice. I can't click on the image. So this is a lake that was uh, dammed. You can see a line here. That's the fault that's been raised up. So that's why it's been dammed. So that is very interesting. Then we've got some faults there. And if we go to 2018. 
we have one in Lake Muir. Depth 1.7 kilometers, so it's very shallow. 5.3. And if we go and have a look at the actual faults that occur, here we have another website from Geoscience Australia. So this is a neo-tectonic features. So these are fault lines that developed in the last five to 10 million years. So quite recent. And they have mapped all of these because they, uh, uh, recent earthquakes take them off. Reliability. Oh, this doesn't want to behave. So here we have all the red lines, which are the fault lines. So fault lines are just breaks in the rock, so fractures. So if you get a rock, you throw it on the ground, it breaks in half. It's basically a rock being fractured, and that's a fra it's similar to what this happens, but usually, uh, no, actually not usually, but they're still in place when they actually break. And this is because of elasticity strength, uh, elasticity strength are failing uh, because you know there's been some pressure applied to either. Like in here, probably one side more than the other. And it's pushing one side either up or down. So these are mostly strike dip faults. So they slide past each other. No, what did I say? Strike dip, strike slip, should I say? Uh, that's I'm not thinking about what I'm saying. So strike slip, so means that they're getting stuck together and they want to go past each other. So you got, oh, can't do it, it's too dark. So that's basically what they are. So these are mostly north-south trending. If we go up north, they tend to be east-west. And all these are, are pretty current, so five to 10 million years. And if we have a look at Victoria, you can see you've got the Otways down here, a lot of them are east-west, as well as the Gippsland. But most of the rest are north-south. So what is actually causing these strike slip? Well, basically, I don't know. I'm not too sure. I've read some information about it. Uh, Joel is just a bit puzzled about why these happen in the middle of plate boundaries. Uh, there's probably some theories out there. Uh, like in the mountain ranges, there's two theories that these mountain ranges are pretty old and a, a basement rock formed about 350 to 400 million years ago. But there's another theory in which uh, these are young mountain ranges that is starting to be uplifted. Uh, but I don't see any mechanism for them to be uplifted. Except for crustal rebound. So that's where uh, the rock is... There was a mountain range that's been eroded. And then, you know, the root of the mountain has not come up. So isostatic equilibrium needs to be pushed up to make it uh, conform to gravity. So that's probably one of them. And, well, maybe it actually is being grown. But usually you need a convergent plant boundary to build mountains. That's pretty much all the evidence that we're seeing. Uh, but if anyone knows... And I will ask Geoscience Australia about this. Uh, could be a different mechanism that's actually happening. So the... Okay, then we can go have a look at all the earthquakes. You can see there's quite a lot of earthquakes in the last 10 years. 
most of them are small but on this one the earthquake that happened yesterday was around here so you can see there's quite a lot of earthquakes inspect tool you can see you got earthquake got the id magnitude 3.1 2.5 most of them are quite small uh, doesn't have any depth but if we go out you can see there's a lot of earthquakes so there's a lot of earthquakes in this region there's a lot of earthquakes Adelaide and north of Adelaide going into the center there's not so many earthquakes in Queensland so it's pretty quiet and Western Australia so even though it's in the middle of a plate it's actually fairly quiet and then you got Indonesia so these are convergent plate boundaries so you got you can see the line there that's where the two plates and this is highly volcanic area and then you got the Philippines so you got convergent plate boundaries there convergent plate boundary here north of Papua New Guinea and then you've got the ring of fire going around and there we have New Zealand if we go out you can see all the earthquakes that are happening around the world so where most of them actually occur is around plate boundaries uh, you'll see Africa doesn't have that much earthquakes so it's probably a factor of analysis so uh, there's not too many seismic stations there but obviously Australia has quite a lot of seismic stations so we can accurately pinpoint where earthquakes come from so you can see there's a lot of faults a lot of fault lines so these faults are quite active a lot of earthquakes so as those fault lines but these ones up here are quite passive so they could be reactivated sometime in the future that's why they're mapped because I'm not too sure if they uh, stop moving or if they can be moved in the future so if we look at a recent earthquake so here we have the one that happened yesterday and you can see this is a pretty quiet area for earthquakes as we were able to pinpoint it from Melbourne uh, it's still a very quiet region so there's no shortage of uh, evidence to see if there's any earthquakes in that place before and as you can see around Morwell, Royal there is quite a few earthquakes and that's all to do with faults so there are probably are more faults than these ones that have not been mapped I think there is a scarcity of um, mapping of this area so if we click one so this is the earthquake got the manual got the coordinates north of Ronson uh, got the date 21st of the 9th then we have some more information and Yeah, a lot of information is probably not really useful. Okay, depth of 10 kilometers. So this is a very shallow one. And magnitude of, where's the magnitude? Yeah, it's actually quite a few. No, it's magnitude of 5.8. So maybe I've gone past it. And this also indicates a lot of uh so you got the main one which is a red and then you got a lot of aftershocks and you probably have a few uh before shocks as well so that is basically what these earthquakes are they're just movements in the faults and there's a strike slip so there could be a, an increase or decrease in elevation might not be, might be just moving past another. So if you want to look at it, strike slip escarpment, 
there is okay so this is a picture of the way way owl fault and this moved up three meters so this was in 2016 it's moved up it's been very eroded since that time so this is basically the evidence that you need to look for for a previous earthquake because when a, the rock breaks like this it's going to cause an earthquake so that's pretty much known now so here we have some images from a scientific article we have a fault movement there you can see the displacement in the post so one side's moved uh, relative to the other and here is that uplift that we saw uh, and the other picture so and then you got two geologists checking out the actual size of the fault and here we have the actual fault itself and you can see there's pretty much uh, that's what evidence you need to look for so now in Australia you probably won't find the evidence of any recent ones uh, I don't think you'll be able to find evidence of any movement in the crust of the current earthquake because uh, it's actually covered by forest so it quite quickly be eliminated and here we have some more other evidence it's quite interesting so it's a the rupture in 2016 in New Zealand uh, so the reason why I'm using New Zealand is that because the information for Australia is actually quite sparse okay you got the fault plane outcrops so these are drawn on top of this uh, model that's uh, been taken from a satellite it looks like anyway that's where I'll leave the video and that's basically why we uh, have volcano uh, not volcanoes faults and earthquakes that are caused by the faults in Australia hope this helps you and have an awesome time learning whatever you want to learn thank you and goodbye